Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to be working on your factoring skills. And this is a particular problem that we're going to be doing. So if you know how to factor this, go ahead and put your answer into the comments section. You can see by the title of the video, I'm giving you a bit of a hint. Matter of fact, I'm pretty much telling you what you need to do in order to uh, factor an expression like this. And if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you absolutely must know how to factor. It's probably one of the most critical skills to be successful in algebra. Now, I'm going to show you the answer to this in just one second, and then we're going to be talking about something that's very, very important when it comes to the topic of factoring. Of course, I'm going to uh, walk through the solution to this problem step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have this expression, negative x squared plus nine over x plus three. The objective here is to factor. Now, before I show you the answer, uh, anytime you are given a problem, like an algebra, say, hey, factor this uh, expression, you don't really know if, in fact, um, the expression can be factored, right? It's very much like uh, numbers like eight, for example. Eight, you can factor, uh, for example, like two times four, right? So eight is factorable, but if I give you the number seven, seven is prime because the only factor of seven is one, right? So there are prime numbers and there's numbers that can be factored. Same thing with variable expressions. There's no guarantee that in fact your expression can be factored. But in this particular case, you absolutely can factor this. And let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. So the solution is the following. Negative x plus three, this would be the correct answer. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right and you're like, this was super easy, let's go ahead and celebrate your factoring success with a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you know how to factor expressions, particularly when you need to factor out a negative one. And that is, of course, in the title of this video, but this is the secret to factoring this particular expression. And uh, I'm going to get, uh, get into why this kind of confuses a lot of students in just one second. But when you are studying, studying factoring, let's just kind of do a quick, quick review for those of you that might be taking some sort of math class that involves algebra. So in the topic of factoring, you typically kind of uh, start off in this manner. You need to understand how to factor out the greatest common factor, right? So if I give you a problem like 2x plus 8, you need to be able to say, oh, okay, 2 is the greatest common factor. So I can factor out a 2 out, so that would be 2 times x plus 4. So if you are struggling with factoring, make sure first you know how to deal with the greatest common factor. All right, so the second thing is, and this is... Um, Pretty typical. You may or may not have learned factoring in this uh, kind of way, but most of you probably did. The next thing you need to know how to do is factor quadratic trinomials, things like this, x squared minus 4x plus 9. Now, this may or may not be uh, uh, able to be factored, but this is just an example of a quadratic trinomial. And then if these quadratic tri uh, trinomials can be factored, um, they're factored into two binomials. And there's different types of trinomials. There's what I call case one, where the leading coefficient's one, and then there's a case two, where the leading coefficient is something other than a one, something like this. So this is a big topic uh, in and of itself. Then uh, the next thing after you master greatest common factor and how to factor quadratic trinomials is to understand special factoring rules, okay? And we're going to actually be using one of these rules here, like the difference of two squares, uh, a squared minus b squared. Of course, that's equal to, let me write this over here, a plus b times a, uh, boy, I can't even write. Let me just kind of squeeze this in, in here, a minus b. Uh, I wasn't really tending to do all this. It's kind of, I'm a little bit not as organized as I like, but hopefully you get the idea. So I'm just kind of setting this up for those of you, because we are talking about the topic of factoring. So if you don't understand these things, then, you know, what I'm placing emphasis on in this uh, particular video on factoring a negative one isn't going to help you if you don't have these other skills. And then lastly, 
you need to be pretty good with uh, something called group factoring. Okay, so that's another topic. Uh, a little bit more advanced mathematics, but you know, it's nothing that you can't handle. So again, factoring a big uh, is a big topic, and there is a situation, um, or excuse me, there are situations where you need to look at uh, factoring out a negative one. And this is uh, this particular problem is one of those situations. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. So here is the problem. Okay. So again, we have negative x squared plus nine over x plus three. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I'm kind of confused with this. I wish the problem was this, okay, x squared minus 9, because x squared minus 9 is what? Well, this is exactly the difference of two squares. Of course, the squares would be x squared minus 3 squared, which follows the rule a squared minus b squared. Of course, that's just uh, what I just uh, wrote in a uh, a few seconds ago, a plus b times a minus b. Okay, so this is the rule, but you have to have a difference of two squares. Here is a difference of two squares, but this is not, what we're dealing with is not a difference. First of all, we have an addition sign, so it's not a difference, it's close, but it's not, you know, exactly what we need. So you're like, boy, you know, this is really close. I like it to be this, but, you know, are we just stuck? Well, not at all, okay? When you have an expression that's pretty close to what you want, but you're you're feeling stuck, a great strategy is to see what happens when you factor out a negative one. So let's go ahead and get into this right now and see what occurs. Okay, so here I have negative x squared plus nine over x plus three. If I factor out a negative one, this negative one is the greatest common factor, right? We talked about how you have to understand how to factor the out uh, the GCF. So negative one, if I factor it out, I could put this in parentheses. And a way to know that you factored anything correctly is just to kind of uh, take your factor and multiply it by uh, back in, okay, using the distributive property and see if you get back to your original expression. So if I take this negative one and multiply it by x squared, I'm gonna get negative x squared. And then negative 1 times this negative 9 will get me back to a positive 9. Now, when we factor out this negative 1, look at what we have right here. Well, here is what I want. This is that difference of two squares. So I can continue to factor because uh, this part of these factors up here in the numerator is factorable. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how that works right now. Okay, so again, here's a situation where we factored out a negative 1 in that numerator expression. So I can have a difference of two squares. Now I can factor this out. X squared minus, uh, minus nine is the same thing as X plus three times X minus three. Now, if you are still kind of confused about factoring at this point, I'm gonna strongly suggest that you get into some real good full instruction. Check out like my Algebra One course, all right? If you're at the Algebra One level, uh, that's probably where you're at because if you uh, made it to Algebra 2, there's no way you can make it to Algebra 2 without knowing how to factor. And uh, I'm going to tell you, a, um, make a statement right here that might seem, um, yeah, let's say, um, you may think I might be exaggerating, but I'm not. And my statement is this. If you do not know how to factor, okay, quadratic trinomial, GCF, etc., you will not be able to pass Algebra. Okay, so if you're in trouble with algebra because of factoring, you must fix your factoring uh, misunderstandings. Okay, you gotta, you know, really invest in learning this stuff, and you absolutely can. What you need though is great instruction and a lot of practice. So check out my Algebra One course. Also, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. Okay, so now, now we can finally factor the, this factor up in the numerator. So I have x plus three. Uh, negative 1 times x plus 3 times x minus 3 over x plus 3. And look right here, we have common factors, which we can cross uh, cancel. And so let's going to do that right now. Okay, so here is our cross canceling of these like factors. And uh, just a little kind of tip here, when you are doing your work for your teacher or homework or for yourself, it doesn't make a difference. Never like uh, uh, show your cross cancel, cross canceling like this. Don't don't make make a big scribble like that. Just be nice and neat so you can see what you cross cancel. Just one nice line, just like this, and just like this. So you you know someone reading your work, i.e. yourself, can see what you cross uh, canceled, and uh, what are uh, 
what are we left with, right? When we've done this right here, so we have uh, just a one in the denominator. So we have my negative one up here. Okay, anytime you might be saying, well, there's nothing left down here, there's zero. No, there's always a one, right? Because one's a factor of everything. Uh, then I have, of course, this x minus three. So that's really what remains, negative one times x minus three over one. So I can just write it this way, negative one times x minus three. And if you had this as your answer, that is correct as well. But you should go ahead and just clean this up and multiply this negative one back in. So negative one times x is negative x. Negative one times this negative three would be a positive three. Okay, so hopefully this was a good little reminder to keep the, that, you know, I don't want to say it's a trick, but, um, you know, factoring out negative one when it comes to factoring problems is, you know, it's, it's a pretty common technique. So keep that in your kind of toolbox of, of your factoring tools that you need to have. And the only way, you know, uh, that you're going to get better at factoring is to face a lot of different type of problems. So please, 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 if you're trying to learn mathematics, especially algebra, work on those factoring skills. It will pay off big time. But hopefully this little video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.